Today I want to talk about how you as a highly sensitive, beautiful person were made. Like what makes a highly sensitive person? What are the traits? What is the context of you becoming a highly sensitive person? And on top of the commonly shared and established truths about highly sensitive person, I will give you a whole different perspective. Because the truth is, I started exploring the subject of my own high sensitivity way before I ever learned that there was a phrase like that, that there was a label of highly sensitive person. So the things that I've learned and the experiences I've gained and processed through and worked through in extreme conditions will shed way more light on your high sensitivity. And the context that I will give you also will provide you way more tools in navigating your life as your beautiful, highly sensitive self. So let me go through some of the commonly listed traits and characteristics of a highly sensitive person. Well, first of all, as the label calls you, you're highly sensitive, which means your nervous system and your way of attuning to environment and attuning to your inner world is way more sensitized, is more intense. And you might actually notice that you are way more reactive to lesser stimuli than other people you know. So it might look like you could be watching a violent movie and you just simply can't bear to look at this. The noises from the TV screen, the scenes that you're looking at, they just affect you way more than someone who's sitting right next to you. You could be putting the cushion over your face because you just simply can't bear to look at the scene. And this goes to all other stimuli that you might be experiencing. So that could be loud music if you go to a concert. It could be meeting with a lot of people where there is not so much the quality, the volume of noise, but there's quantity in numbers. So there could be a number of people who even when they speak at kind of relatively tolerable volume of noise, but there is a lot of kind of white noise, as I call it. You know, there is just a lot of conversations, a lot of laughter. And because you pick up on the details so much and absorb this, your nervous system has to process and digest it, as I call it. Very few people know and fewer people share that anything that goes inside us through stimuli, through sound, through vision, through food, through any, all, any of the external stimuli, like reading, consuming podcasts, has to be digested through us. And for you as a highly sensitive person, that's even more intense amount of stimuli that goes through your system because you actually take in more of the information from the outside. You as a highly sensitive person have been made that way because of constantly attuning to the environment from very early childhood. It could have been from early as an infant that you were tuning in your parents' energy to pick up on any changes. And many of you have been made in households when there was certain lack of warmth at home, when you had to anticipate your parents' needs in one way or another. And this is actually a sad realization for so many of us that have that from early childhood, we had to sort of work to tend to other people's needs. And this is how we developed this fine attunement to listening to other people's needs, to the changes in environment, to small changes 
in what we could observe so that we could tweak our behavior as small babies to meet other people's needs, to make ourselves more accepted, belonging. I would go as far as to claim that high sensitivity has been developed by you and me as a way to cope, literally as a survival skill. Yes, there are some genes involved, but the expression of genes is the, determined by the environment we live in. So if you were forced to constantly prove your worth to others through your changes in behavior, through anticipating other people's needs and through your ways of making other people feel better, then you have probably and very likely have carried out of this environment a belief of low self-worth about yourself. By the way, this belief has nothing to do with the truth about you, but the environment gave you the idea very likely that you had to perform, serve and prove your usefulness to be accepted. And if there were some people or a person in your childhood that you had to tend to, you had to keep meeting their needs by changes in your behavior, by being a good girl or boy, whatever that meant by them, the manipulations, the constant proving of your worth to them, then, you know, you ingrained this as your identity. You believed that it spoke something about you. Them never being fulfilled, you ingrained as something about you. But all it had is something about them and not being able to handle their own emotional wants. And this is my perspective that I'm giving to you, what I've discovered and what I've discovered through conversations with so many people. And this is rarely shared information that I will build upon, but I really wanted to kind of digress it in here so that you would understand where your traits have been formed. Now, like I mentioned, some of the traits were very high sensitivity to sensory perception, to light, to noise, to the amounts and quantities of those stimuli. It could be that you are more prone to fall sick because our systems, not just nervous system, but they're so sensitive to being overwhelmed by these things. And if we cannot process, we don't have enough awareness, we don't have enough of alone time, we don't have enough of time in general to process things, they build up in our system and then we fall sick. So one of the traits of highly sensitive people, as I just hinted, is need for a lot of alone time and generally for a lot of space and privacy that maybe we are not given oftentimes. So if you have that need that I just described that make us so overwhelmed by the amount of stimuli, then of course our need for more privacy, for more alone time will be bigger than people who didn't develop that trait, obviously. So honoring this need is very important for you as a highly sensitive person. I adore having my time alone and I do live alone now. So I actually am the most happy when I can enjoy my own company. But that comes with a certain inner conflict, as I would want to call it, because many of you have grown up with 
a sense of not belonging. I just described that highly sensitive people grow up often in households when you need to perform, when you need to anticipate someone's needs, when you often needed to self-sacrifice what was authentic to you, but to appease and be more accepted to others, you have to give up some of your needs to belong. But people actually didn't realize and never acknowledged the cause and effect of your fine tuning to many people's expectations. So the fact that you have been absorbing so much of their needs, their moods, their changes, so that you can make yourself available perhaps, or make yourself useful. It comes with territory that you will now need more time to digest all the additional stimuli, all the additional kind of burden that we get through anticipating to other people's needs and being ready for others. Oftentimes, if you are a highly sensitive person, you might be having a very caring personality, very creative and very resourceful because of what you've developed from the whole of your life in having to care for others which, as I just mentioned and hinted, it comes with a level of self-sacrifice. So caring for yourself might actually be harder for you. This is how you were programmed, mentally conditioned, to give up your need as a mean to serve more for other people. Some days you might be actually feeling so overwhelmed through your readiness, through your being available to others, through giving up your boundaries that you become overwhelmed, overstimulated, and frankly just downright exhausted from giving up your resources. You become literally empty well by constantly pouring out, pouring out, and pouring out from yourself and leaving very little for yourself. So all the traits of being highly sensitive, overreactive to the stimuli, the traits of being easily sensitized by noises and other people's emotions, by light, all that happens because we have poured so much of the outside noise into our nervous system that there is always a limit to it. There is always a breaking point where you just simply can't pour more in. Imagine your nervous system as a bucket where it has its limit. And that's why having those moments of alone time, it literally saves you from going crazy. You have probably listened attentively to so many people's problems, but if you don't find that time alone for yourself and don't put any boundaries in your life to keep gaining, replenishing yourself, instead of keeping on pouring and pouring other people's burdens and pains into your bucket. Now, this is when we become exhausted, when we become tired, when there is no more left, either for others, but also for ourselves. It's walking a very tight rope all the time if you are the unaware type of highly sensitive person. And I speak about various stages of being highly sensitive where you might be growing a level of self-awareness and self-empowerment over time. Then over time you might build way more space in that bucket of yours 
for doing things that you enjoy for a living life more fully. But unless you address certain basics such as caring for yourself, taking enough alone time, making very good boundaries, until then you would regularly become exhausted, exploited by others because you simply have a difficulty with saying no and living authentically in honoring your resources, your resource of privacy, your resource of time, your resource of energy. Now, I really want to add one thing that is very important. You as a highly sensitive person, because your sensations are so intense, you experience the emotions and stimuli so intensely, we become frightened by the intensity, by how uncomfortable it is to be with those sensations. And as they are a result to a perceived danger or threat or whatever kind of seem to be negative going on in our life, then the determining factor in taking choices in our life will become seeking safety will become making sure and controlling your environment so that it's predictable, that you don't risk any more of the intense emotions from showing up. So the, the sad truth actually is that over time of being a highly sensitive person, and especially for someone who lacks the important tools of dealing with that high sensitivity, then the quality of life without the proper tools might become very kind of minimized, that you start avoiding many things in your life out of fear of experiencing another flooding emotion or flooding sensations that you believe you're not able to cope with. So unconsciously many choices you might be taking is by avoidance. And sadly, if, if you are limiting yourself through avoiding various things that you might want to pursue, you might want to pursue your passion or engage with some people or engage in some events or whatever, but because you live in this constant unconscious fear of re-experiencing certain emotion that was so intense and frightening, then you might be cutting yourself out from living your life fully. And you, more than other personality types, will struggle with what I call an emotional roller coaster, where you respond to the sensations, the intensity of sensations you get given so strongly that you get very reactive and very quickly. It can be just in a flash that you react to something even through your behavior with fear or withdrawal or even sometimes with being snappy at someone. And you know, this is very typical because how your nervous system has developed, you experience your emotions more intensely. It's almost like you have more pain coming out of these emotions. And actually you experience your pain levels, your physical pain levels more intensely as well. Your threshold is way lower. You're basically more overwhelmed by your sensations because they tend to be so intense. Now, the emotional roller coaster, and I speak about this in my other video, is a thing that happens when you react to your intense emotions so strongly and you start obsessing about things in your head. So the sensations live in your body and the thoughts live in your head. Let's call it this way. And you feed one another with the intense thoughts that follow the intense sensations. You try to figure it out and escape the situation and obsess about the problem that you might be having. And then you feed 
the fear, the emotions into growing more intense. Okay, and then because they've overwhelmed you even more than the first time, now you try to figure it out and seek urgently a solution even more in your mind, in your head. And that feeds the roller coaster. You're constantly trying to troubleshoot. You're constantly trying to put out this fire by figuring out your options, by trying to cope. But this scenario actually never gets you off of the emotional roller coaster, as I call it. You're just constantly looping in a place and you can never find a relief. You actually exhaust yourself internally. And sometimes it is triggered by something relatively minuscule, something very mild as a stimuli from the outside. But because how we process this, by this constant feeding and fueling with your emotions and with your thoughts and obsessions, then you actually get stuck in this phase until you get exhausted. Now, being a highly sensitive person comes not only with challenges, it comes with a great amount of gifts. You get to tap to those gifts when you bring your awareness forth, when you learn about yourself, when you self-reflect every day in that free spare time. Now, what are the gifts of a highly sensitive person? They're countless, but one of the gifts is actually what is also the challenge. This is your high sensitivity. So you are very quickly observant and perceptive to any small changes in others, but also in yourself. Now, how this is a gift as opposed to being a challenge is that when you have enough awareness, now that you may be developed a level of awareness, educating yourself through videos such as this one or some articles you might be reading, you have learned about your inner world, how you function, and you observe things more neutrally. You are very in tune with them, but you don't absorb them as much because you've learned how to put boundaries. You've learned how to say no to others. You've learned how to live more authentically and loving yourself through commitments that you show up for yourself. So you've kind of grown more resiliency from inwards. Like I said, you filled up your bucket from within, but not with other people's stimuli, but you actually nourished yourself so much that you're strong from within. You are confident enough to say no because you don't fear rejection so much. But because you're so in tune, you can use that information still in service to others, but on your own terms. You do it differently to what you're used to. You don't have to avoid so many things anymore, but you still can respond to life very quickly because you can feel it so perceptively. You're just so perceptive to the environment. So this is one of the gifts. The other of the gifts is that you are oftentimes caring you are very resourceful with what you can do. Remember how I told you that you were employed to serve others unwillingly for the big part of your life. So you've developed this nature of caring of others. So this is ama an amazing gift. And if you are empowered and using that gift, then people will really appreciate you for what you have to offer. And this can really help in a business. It can help in a workplace because you listen to other people's needs. You filter it through how you can help and to what extent you're willing to help because now you have boundaries and you can attend to those needs 
and that can really push you forward amongst your, your peers, your colleagues to be a very useful addition to your team or if you own your own business then to your clients. You can also use that gift of caring and resourcefulness in simply using the few things that you have in offering a lot. So this, this taps into creativity that many of you also possess, which is doing a lot with very few resources. You've probably become resourceful in your own life in solving all kinds of problems of others and your own, because maybe, well, you were not so well tended to as you learned to tend to other people's needs they got an impression that you're so independent and you can do everything on your own, perhaps. Now, that really grown into huge strength of resourcefulness and being creative with your time, with whatever you have, you own. You don't need even so much in your life to make a lot out of this. And this is such a great skill because people often blame circumstances for not having this, not having that, and not being able to progress in your life, in their life, because not having those things. But you know that you can do a lot with very few ingredients. God knows it's really helpful in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> where you just have so few things in the fridge, but you're able to put a meal together that will taste good and will satisfy and nourish you. And this is such a great analogy because you just know you have to make things work and you make them work. This is such an like, impressive trait for so many walks of life, for so many areas of your life that is hard to over praise. So embrace your gifts, embrace your sensitivity, but grow your boundaries and your self-sovereignty at the same time. Embrace your gifts of caring with those boundaries in place on your own terms. You need to figure things out, how to stop avoiding things. And I talk about it in my other video. And instead, do life, do you on your own terms. Because unfortunately, so many highly sensitive people, they cut out so many things because they got overstimulated, they got overexploited. Now, when you draw conclusions from that lesson, you can design to still engage in those things, but on your own terms, in your own way. So more than anything, I would want for you to make the most of this episode. I want you to reflect how these things play in your life. Become empowered as opposed to feeling like a victim to your high sensitivity. Embrace this, learn how to use your emotions as opposed to being used by them. And I also talk about this in my other episode. If you want to watch it, I will link it here because it's such an important paradigm shift to have. You don't have to be a victim to your highly intense emotions. You can actually be on top of that game and empowered by your sensitivity. So thank you for watching my video today and I hope to see you in the next one.